Hi there, welcome to this in-depth video on ipotropium. This video will cover all the essentials. How and when to use ipotropium, what is the effect of ipotropium, what is the correct dose, but also what are possible side effects, and is it safe to use when pregnant or when giving breastfeeding. I also made a shorter, more to the point video that covers all the basics in easy to understand language. You can find the link to that video in the description. Before we start, a little disclaimer, this video is meant purely informational, this is not medical advice and if you're looking for medical advice, always contact your own doctor. So, ipotropium is the generic name of this medication, but it's known under several brand names, among them Atrovent, Apraxa, Apovent, Orinatec, and there are some more. This medication is available in those aerosols, nebulizers and inhalation powder and can be used in any lung disease that causes bronchospasm, most commonly asthma or COPD, and is also used in a lung function test to test the res uh, reversibility of bronchial obstruction. So how does it work? Ipotropium consists of parasympathetic agents that can lock uh, competitively to the muscarine receptor and leads to inhibition of acetylcholine and therefore relaxation of smooth muscles and bronchodilatation in the alveoli of your lungs and therefore it might be easier to breathe in and breathe out after the use of this medication. So some advice, if you want to prescribe ipotropium in case of asthma, always use these three steps. Start with lifestyle interventions. Stop smoking, do enough exercise and weight reduction if necessary. If this however is insufficient, you go to step two. Step two is when a patient has less than two complaints of asthma a week and then you should start a short-acting beta-2 sympathetic mimetic. The next step would be when there are three or more episodes of asthma in a week, you can start an inhaled corticosteroid or long-acting beta-2 sympathetic mimetic and probably you start them both together. If you want to use ipotropium in case of COPD, there are four steps uh, you can use. Step one again is lifestyle interventions. Step two is when you start with a short-acting bronchodilatator and a bronco, uh, beta-2 sympathetic mimetic like salbutamol. If this is insufficient, you go to step three, which is a long-acting bronchodilatator like Advir. And step four is inhaled corticosteroids like fluca, uh, fluticasone or long-acting bronchodilatators, again like Advir. And you only use step four when there's more than one hospitalization needed to treat COPD in a year. So how do you use it? Um, you inhale it and within 15 minutes you have effect of this medication and it will last from three to eight hours. How long can you keep using it? Um, in case of asthma, during breathlessness, uh, as long as your doctor prescribes it. And for COPD you should use it at fixed times to create a maintenance level of epitropium in your blood. This way you will be protected against the COPD complaints. Regarding safety, there are no restrictions. You can use epitropium and drive safely. You can combine it with little amounts of alcohol and with any type of food without any problems. So what would be the correct dose? If you want to use epitropium as maintenance treatment in asthma or COPD, you're an adult or a child older than six years, you can use aerosols or inhalation powders, 40 milligrams, three to four times a day if necessary, and asthma, and for COPD, you just take it three to four times a day at fixed times. Um, for ad adults and children older than 12 years, you can also use nebulizers, you can use 250 to 500 micrograms, three to four times a day, for children from 6 to 12 years, if you want to use a nebulizer, the correct dose would be 250 milligrams. And you can repeat it if it's uh, insufficient upwards to four times, and then the maximum dose is 1000 milligrams. If you want to use ipotropium for acute asthma exacerbations in adults or children older than 12 years, you can use a nebulizer, 500 micrograms, and if it's insufficient, you can repeat it maximally four times, uh, so you have a dose of 2000 micrograms. You can also combine it with a short-acting beta-2 sympathetic mimetic to even improve the complaints. And if you want to treat a child from 6 to 12 years old, 
you can use 250 micrograms on the nebulizer. You can repeat this up to four times if necessary. Then ipotropium also has some side effects. Commonly, 1 to 10% of all people will have a headache, dizziness, dry mouth, cough, throat irritations, nausea, or gastrointestinal motility disorders. Uncommonly, less than 1% of all people will have tachycardia, which is a fast heartbeat, palpitation, ly laryngospasms, um, dry throat, itching, skin rashes, mouth edema, stomatitis, vomiting, diarrhea, urinary retentions, midriasis, and there are some more. I will not name them all, and feel free to pause the video to check them out in more detail. And then rarely we see atrial fibrillations, intestinal occlusions, and urticaria. Once again, if you think you might be experiencing any of these side effects, or maybe another one, always check your prescription and contact your doctor to see if your dose needs to be adapted, or maybe you should, should change uh, to another medication that might be more suitable for you. So regarding interactions with other medications, there are no known interactions uh, between ipotropium and maybe other medications, so it's very safe to combine. Then when you're pregnant, uh, it's insufficiently researched if ipotropium is safe to use, so it can potentially be harmful for you or the baby, and therefore it's advised to only strictly use it on indication, on advice of your doctor. For lactation, which is breastfeeding, it's safe to use, and you can use ipotropium as prescribed. Then there are only one contraindication, which is hypersensitivity in a patient to atropine or atropine derivates. And when this is the case, you should not prescribe ipotropium. Some warnings in patients uh, with paradoxal bronchospasm, you should switch the treatment because they, because they can get adverse events. In patients with heart conditions, prostatic hypertrophia, urinary retention or bowel occlusion, also be very careful because they may have more side effects. Also avoid the contact between hypertropium and the eyes because it may lead to acute glaucoma. And in patients with uh, cystic, fibr cystic fibrosis, um, hypertropium may increase the gastrointestinal motility and may lead to complaints of nausea and vomiting. So be careful. Then my last slide, kinetic properties. Resorption is 10-30% in the lungs. First pass is 7-28% to in the lungs. So it isn't that good. T-max is within 10 to 20 minutes. Um, elimination is 40% by kidneys and 60% by liver. And uh, it takes your body six hours to decrease the maximum level of this medicine in your blood. So this was my in-depth video on hypertropium. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment sections and subscribe for more upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.